Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Dark Souls 2 with me, Necromancer. Last time with Faram, we had just broken into the lost city of Shulva, and immediately buggered off to work on a few upgrades. I checked right before I started the episode, and I actually have enough Titanite to take my Bandit Axe all the way up to the wonderful plus 10, and once I get a singular chunk, I'll be able to bring my Blacksmith Hammer right in line. Considering that I'm going into a pretty long DLC, and there's not going to be very many rest stops, I'm going to actually spend my tight night on upgrading my armor before I actually do too much with the DLC, just so that it's a bit safer for me. I'm not going to need this tight night for a long time coming, so any bit of extra defenses is really going to help, especially because there will be some extra special titanite down there in the lost city of Shulva as well, so just as many preparations as possible before we finally take the plunge and I start making my way through this horrible, horrible city of poison, toxin, archers, and all manner of god knows what. Immediately come down here. They introduced a lot of interesting items, like the old growth bomb that I just picked up that if, if I could find it I could show you it temporarily increases strength so for the period while that buff is active you actually have five extra strength and that will increase not only your damage but also the sorts of weapons that you can use effectively oh, really <laughs> that is so close I just wanted out oh, out Immediately come up and punch this, just so that you don't have to deal with that archer plinking away at you and you get some really free damage on the uh, Sanctum Knights over here. That is one of the really interesting mechanics that they were sure to include in this DLC that I think really allows the player to level the playing field, especially if they're a little bit underleveled or whatnot. Being able to get an early massive chunk of damage like that. Oh, As you can see, I have the adaptability to start rolling properly, but now I just need to work on my timing. Not to mention the fact that a lot of their attacks, while usually e easy to dodge, are very broad and sweeping. So you can have a bit of difficulty if you're not playing it careful. Oh, like that. <laughs> However, that being said, backstabs are the easiest thing in the world since they leave their swings hanging there for far too long. And, looks like I'm in the wonderful posi full position of being able to kill them with a singular backstab, so these enemies should not pose nearly as much to the threat as they might otherwise if, say, I couldn't backstab them to death. Wow, already got these Sanctum Soldier Gauntlets. Those are actually the most worthwhile piece of armor in the DLC, just because they give you... Oh, you know, come to think of it, I really should have a ranked weapon for this. I'm pretty sure I picked up the heavy crossbow plus three. Yeah. And I've got the lightning short bow in case I want to do anything with my poison arrows, so I'm in a pretty good place. I was considering grabbing the longbow plus seven that's down there somewhere, but I don't think it's really going to be worth the extra effort that it would take to grab it just yet. Because I have other ranged options, and dex is really not one I want to be using for my range damage. Come down here. Dark Quartz Ring plus three, if hexes are giving you any sorts of problems. I am going to leave that up just so that I don't have to bother with it later. But that does raise the question of where do I go next? And that's one of the issues in Shulva is that it's a bit of a maze, really. And so you can often find yourself in a position where you're not really sure where you're supposed to be headed. I think I could fall down there and start doing some stuff, but maybe that's not what they want me to do. Just kind of got to look around. This is going to be one of... Oh, it looks like I can... Anything down there? Oh, we're... Turns out, this is where we're headed. Consequences be damned, we're 
Going in live. So you just walk around. Oh. And you're supposed to be able to get the backstab, but sometimes the game's a little bit touchy and doesn't really want to give it to you. So you kind of just have to acquiesce and take what it will give you. Pop this up. I believe this is the longbow plus seven. Let's check. Yeah. And this is nice because it will allow you to get most of the secrets in this level uh, just with plinking away with regular arrows since all of these will trigger with regular wooden arrows. You don't need... Oh! Never stand out in the open. It's a terrible idea. There's nothing to be gained from it. But all of the little plinth looking things that uh, trigger the Shulva mechanisms will trigger using just regular wooden arrows so you don't need to have a stockpile of iron or heavy bolts just to be able to access all these DLC secrets and that's something I did like is that they just made it very simple if you have a method of ranged attacks you can access these secrets if not well you're SOL come right on over oh, oh. I do take some free damage, but eh, it's to be expected. When they group up on you like that, something's got to give. Just steadily walk around behind him. It's even easier if you have a shield, but I don't really need it right now. Again, most of this area isn't going to be too much of a threat. Even though I'm... this is only my... oh! <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. So that happened. I remembered there being a ledge there, but apparently I have to trigger the ledge. <laughs> so, let's try that again, shall we? Yes. Cueing myself up just for the fashion souls. I'm actually curious if maybe I made a mistake in upgrading the bandit axe, and maybe the blunt damage of the blacksmith's hammer would have had that little bit of extra damage in order to outright kill these Sanctum Knights in a single hit. But time for second guessing is over. Right now I have my character and I just need to play him to the best of my ability and use strong attacks instead of just two light attacks. I'm going to get the trade there. Oh, no. those stupid archers. They just pump out so much damage from range. Oh, the Sanctum Mace. That's a really nice early drop. It's a pretty interesting strength weapon in that it has one of those self-damage effects, but it's not quite damage. It's a mixture... Oh, let's get out of the way of that. It's a mixture between the self... Oh, goodness. I was expecting him to take a little bit longer on the recovery there, but as I was saying, the Sanctum Mace is a mixture between the Chaos Katana and the Life Hunt Scythe from... Dark Souls 1, in that it actually procs a status ailment on you, but instead of being bleed or just self-damage, it actually procs poison with every swing. Now the reason that is, is very clear. It has incredible base damages, but the one strange thing is that for all of its base damage, it doesn't upgrade like regular weapons. It uses regular Titanite, but the proportions are all off. With regular Titanite, you get a 10% upgrade in base damage with every single upgrade. However, with the Sanctum Mace and another weapon that we'll get a little bit later on into the DLC, you don't actually get that full 10% bonus with each upgrade. It's only about 5%, if I remember correctly, even though, again, it is upgrading with regular Titanite. So... I'm not sure why they did that, but I think it's just so that they could give you a weapon with higher base damages because they knew you already had to have at least something since you made it to the DLC in the first place and make it so that they weren't punishing you for already having a weapon set up if you, in case you wanted to switch over to one of the newer weapons. But again, that's that's just theorizing. I don't really know why they changed it up, because that is something very strange for FromSoft to do, to warp the way their entire upgrade system works over a single item. Well, not a single item, but a pair of items. Sad I missed out on that drop, but... Yeah. Normally, 
that ledge that you can see sort of recessed in there is extended but apparently when I came through here I just triggered that without really realizing so let's have a look-see around and see if I can find the trigger yeah it's probably that one right there so be sure to actually tag this before you go plunging to your death like like I did come on across this is, this is how it's supposed to happen people <laughs> And there is... there we are. I'm just going to use poison throwing knives because I don't uh, have any reason to be conserving those at this moment. None of the enemies in this DLC are weak to poison, so it's not going to do me a whole lot of favors. There we go. Just cut them out of the sky. The Oh! The strong attack on this weapon is really good for if you have enemies coming in from a vertical direction. So as long as I remember that. Elizabeth Mushroom. And this is a little area that kind of gives you a preview of what's coming next in the level before you head back across to where you're supposed to be coming from. As you can see already, I've had multiple drops, jumps, puzzle pieces, not puzzle pieces, but mechanism triggers that all come together in order to let me clear through the level fight the enemies here and really just play the game and that's one of the best things about this DLC is that it really takes advantage of level design and how the player is going to be playing the game in order to make a really all-encompassing experience because it's not about any single one of these elements it's about tossing them all together so that the player gets something really fresh because that's something that Dark Souls 2 really lacked. There wasn't a whole lot of real originality. There wasn't anything really fresh about it. But at the same time, its mechanics are so wonderfully tight, and it controls so well, that it's it's still one of my favorite Souls games. It's I would say it's better than Demon Souls, simply because it plays so well. Demon Souls is a bit of a funky game in that it it really needs you to like it before you can start playing it. You, you have to get into the mindset of playing Demon Souls because it's not a very welcoming game. The systems are all obtuse, as is the general Souls fashion, but at the same time, they're obtuse in very strange ways. Like, it, it doesn't... It's not intuitive as a lot of... Or at least, as I would say, a lot of the... Uh, mechanics of Dark Souls are, but at the same time, yeah, let's use some heavy bolts. These guys are a little bit annoying because you can't actually hit them on the stones, you actually have to hit them either on the face or tail or sides, and so the easiest way to do that is just to get a ranged weapon out. For the longest time, I didn't actually know that you could fight them, I just assumed that since they were armored against all my attacks, that I just had to treat them as basically moving obstacles. And it was only much later when I was uh, dissing about on Reddit, reading about some of the bits of the DLC, that I found out, nope, they actually can all be killed by striking them. And, not only that, but... How do I get over there? They also have a chance to drop a lot of rare items and special loot that you can't necessarily get multiples of. Like, I've heard tale, at least, of them dropping things like the Puzzling Sword, which, while I can't confirm, would be pretty friggin' awesome if they did. Oh. Something I am gonna want to do is have an alternative wood bolts equipped for the crossbow, just in case, because I don't really want to be wasting any heavy bolts just triggering the, uh, Oh, turns out there's a guaranteed Sanctum Mace, so in case I want to dual wield those. But, uh, oh. He is not paying attention, and that will cost him. But I want to have just a regular, really mundane ammo type for hitting all the uh, triggers and little plinths throughout the level, as opposed to using up the really important heavy bolts. I'm gonna... You gonna fight me? You are not gonna fight me. You're just gonna whiff. There we 
we are. I'm going to want to trigger both of those at range, just because getting close is going to trigger some far out enemies to start planking away at me themselves. Oh, I, I have no regular wooden arrows, so let's just stick with the crossbow. It's a little bit awkward to use because you have to remember to two-hand it in order to fire it properly. Oh, and I'm using the heavy bolts, so I'm just doing nothing proper about that whatsoever. Let's just see if this can get a proper backstab. Hopefully he stands up. Okay. So long as you trigger the animation... Oh, yeah. The blunt damage really does a number on these guys. At least from the backstab. So, if I'm going to be backstabbing, this will actually be the perfect weapon. So that way I conserve some of my durability. Best way I've found for this is immediately run up and try and take out at least one or two of them. Oh, no you don't. <laughs> that was a little bit of a wonky stretch for the backstab animation, but I'll take it. It still gets me the kill, even if it does draw me into a little bit of damage. Come on up. Oh dear. There we go. Maybe I think the archers have a little bit less health than the regular Sanctum Knights. Yeah. Yeah, that backstab, I like it. Oh. Can I get him oh <laughs> well not like this I'm not gonna be able to. I'm wondering if I can get him using part of the axe's regular move set. That doesn't look like it's gonna be able to do anything unless I get the proper angle on it and because I don't want to... Okay. I can if I use a certain angle with the hammer. That's good to hear. That is, that is good news. Anything down... Yeah, there's something down there, but how do I trigger that? Hmm. Oh. Let's see if this does it for me. It does indeed. Wonderful. See, a lesser man than I would try and make that jump, but I know better because I'm smart. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be fooled from soft. I know your tricks. Make it look like I can make it. It's funny because I probably could, but it's it's not worth the risk. That is a little bit of a bait item in that you don't get that item until much much later. But that, oh yeah. That one as well. It's it's just kind of teasing us with that which we cannot have. Okay, I've activated all of them and I can safely make it across to the bonfire. I remembered my first time coming through here. I didn't actually realize what those were for. And so I made it to the bonfire by standing on this and then triggering the uh, mechanism instead of going through the full level and triggering it by actually being able to walk up to it, so that was always a little bit funny for me. Grab that. I believe there's a few items over here on the right hand side I'm gonna wanna grab before I actually rest because right now I actually have a nice little break from all the Sanctum Knights popping up and trying to kill me because I've already dispatched most of them, but that's only gonna last for so long before I'm gonna need some more Estus. Ow. <laughs> it's a little bit frustrating dealing with the uh, crossbow mechanics, but it's not too bad. Do I have to hop in early? What is this for? What is this for? There was no item on top, so... Why does that... why is that there? Is there something you need to shoot from its vantage point? I... maybe it... oh, I think it, what it's there for is to block the view of the archer. Maybe. Is there anything else? I'm pretty sure there were two side ones, or maybe I'm thinking of the secret a little bit later, so... That's the problem with heading, uh, clearing through a DLC that you haven't really familiarized yourself with. I've only had a single playthrough to uh, head through here, 
So I am still a little bit fresh on some of the tricks and mechanics that are behind this level. Mmm. Mmm. That looks risky. That's, that's what I'm going to say about this. What does that trigger? Oh, that's worthless. Maybe it's not worthless. Maybe it'll make a path to that. Yeah, it will. See, I'm smart, guys. I'm not wasting ammo, I swear. Oh, goodness. I, w I used another heavy bolt. I'm just going to not even distinguish between the two at this point. It's not working out for me. Huh. Now there's another? No. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's just get this one right now. No one needs to be a hero. Oh. <laughs> I swear I pressed the jump button. But it does not want to recognize that, so... Upwards to the bonfire. This is why you always want to tag the bonfire, even if you're not going to rest at it. Because at least then you have it as your checkpoint. That is a really good system that they didn't have in Dark Souls 1 that I'm really glad they brought over. Is that even if you don't uh, want to necessarily rest at the bonfire, you still want to have it as your checkpoint. There we go. Chunk. Come on down. Yeah, it's definitely so that... Now I see. It is so that the archer doesn't have as much time to be plinking away at you. And the secondary pillar there will also block its view while I t dispatch this guy really quickly. Hmm. When they switch to their... Oh, did I just miss this drop entirely? It's a good thing I came back through here. Oh, twinkling. That's good. Ow. <laughs> That'll it'll be a few more armor upgrades, or actually set me on my way to upgrading the red iron equipment. Oop. Get out of that fight. Do not want to fight this here. Or this, honestly. Come in for the kill. Wait for him. There we are. Now that he's whiffed, I can come behind and cut him down. Something that you may have noticed if you were paying attention is that this little chasm here, while it looks unpassable at the moment, and you may not be able to see the trigger, if you can get a view of it right there above the uh, red eye statues, that's their way of drawing your eye. But you can actually fall down here and shoot up at it, because while you're at the top, you won't actually be able to shoot the... Uh, trigger because of the angle it's at and regular arrows will not destroy the red eye statues here we go time to be tricky yeah that's one that's two that's one that's that's not two that is not what that is still not two there we are it's a little bit tricky about getting those angles, but it's not too terribly difficult. It's just a matter of making sure you're facing yourself in the right direction. Something that's really funny is that I was actually able to get most of them with uh, a two-handed greatsword in my first run of this area. So, no matter what weapon you're using, there's always some way to really finagle the system in order to get it for you. Now I could restore my weapon durability by whipping it, but there's no real point since my weapons are pretty okay right now, so I'm just going to kill it for the dried roots that it will drop. And it will respawn, that's the other great thing. Didn't want to die for some reason, but uh, it will respawn and it will drop three dried roots for you every single time. The dried roots are basically a weaker version of Elizabeth mushrooms, in that they will constantly heal you for a really, really long time, but they just don't have quite the healing numbers as the Elizabeth Mushrooms. Let's see. Maybe I can make the jump. Ah. Uh, one of the 
weird intricacies about the jumping system in this game is that you can actually jump almost right after you leave a platform and so it will suck you down a few inches and change the trajectory of your jump whereas if I just jump like this you can see that I go up a few inches and then kind of fall down but depending upon where you're jumping from and especially if it happens a lot near your edges but it will actually not give you any of the upward mobility of your jump because it read it as you jumping from a few inches below where you actually did because you jumped at the very end of the platform and so it kind of counted you as in free fall at the time it's just a little bit of a weird trick of the system and it can sometimes screw you over if you're not being careful to uh, account for that I guess come over here grab the backstab can I get a two-handed attack that no that won't work but that will so that's him down I'm just gonna reclaim those souls and I don't remember what's what that item is but right now it's giving me too much trouble to uh, pay any mind I think it's better if I just keep on moving especially because you guys watching me attempt to grab the same item for 10 20 minutes is probably not gonna make for the best viewing just line them up for the backstabs this is also a little bit reminiscent of Dark Souls 1 in how these systems play out, just because it really is backstab city with the Shulva Knights. Oh, if I can trigger this, then I can just walk on over and grab that. So ignore me, I am totally going to grab this item. I don't know why I would do any different, like, it's kind of my MO, just grab all the items. There we go, Thunder Quartz Ring plus one plus three, just in case the two casters who still insist upon uh um <laughs> what what is what is going on here okay <laughs> I'm wondering if I can get a plunging attack I I don't know what's going on, and I'm probably going to Homeward Bone just so that I can regain more complete control of my character, because it kind of walks at a very strange pace. It it loses a little bit of the forward momentum, so I, I don't really want to be dealing with this, but uh, that's weird. <laughs> I assume it has something to do with a little bit of an elevation glitch, stemming from the... Uh, being on the platforms when they're rising and falling but that was that was kinda silly I'm not gonna lie and that really should be all of the special loot that's in this area just come on over aggro him now I can head on throughout the level and show you a little bit more of what the DLC has to offer get the kill he will aggro and come running. Spare my weapon durability. I'm not always consistent about it, but when I'm thinking about it, I, I like to switch up my weapons in order to sort of give everything a chance to break evenly. That way I still have a full selection of weapons by the end of the level. Sin comes in like a real bro and just takes out those two Sanctum Knights at the end of the bridge. I think that's meant to show how he's kind of terrorizing the city. Oh, excuse me. And still being a source of problems for Shulva in, as a whole. But it is just a nice little thing from the devs to give you a pass on that first encounter. Because two lance wielders in that really narrow confines can be a little bit of a trick. Here we are finally in the Dragon Sanctum. This is really great because they're introducing you to the little pressure plate mechanic that is so integral to this area. I didn't manage to find all the pressure plates on my first playthrough, but 
I'm pretty sure that I have a decent idea of where they are all now, at least. And like I said, From Software is very good about introducing you to mechanics in a very organic fashion. And this is just a wonderful way to teach the player, yeah, hit the, hit the little pressure plates, you'll get an item. It's already establishing that these, this is a clear reward system. Do this, and you get something good out of it. Immediately want to clear these away. I didn't actually discover this mechanic until I was far and away past the uh, Sanctum Knight section of the level. Because I never actually managed to locate the crypt room that has most of their bodies. And so I had simply dealt with all of the ghosts except for these two because I never actually encountered this room more than once because I full cleared this entry area on my first way through so I never came back to realize that they had become corporeal when I destroyed their bodies. And I destroyed their bodies after taking the time to kill each of them with my hide knight sword. So I, <laughs> I was not playing too smart and had a lot of extra difficulties and a lot of broken hide knight swords specifically because of these ghosts not necessarily these ghosts but the ghost mechanic that they introduced here I do like this little area just because it gives you so much free chests any place that gives you even a single chest is okay in my book and when they give you five like this I mean I'm in heaven this is this is what I play Dark Souls for that little bit of loot every now and again. Oh. Oh. It's really weird when... Oh. <laughs> you just kind of stop jumping. It's really weird when you get the... Uh, roll. But you still take the damage as well. I'm pretty sure that's a function of having such high adaptability. Is that it... Can't really... The game can't really tell whether I made the roll or not. And so it just procs both the damage and the roll at the same time. Come on through. Execute these guys because otherwise they're gonna try to have a fancy little ambush with me. Those tiara wearing... oh! Really evil priestess looking things are just the absolute dickens. Not only do they... oh, let's get out of the way. Or we could just eat all the crossbow bolts, that's fine too. But they are really frustrating because not only do they plink away at you with range the entire time, but even once you kill them, they have a chance of exploding into toxic mist, which just ruins my day when I'm in melee combat. This secret, oh, so worthwhile. You open this up, you're not really sure what to expect, and then they lay it on you. Five Twinkling Titanite and three Petrified Dragon Bones. Oh my god, that is just so much. I love it. I love everything about it. I want more. They really know how to handle loot in Dark Souls. And gosh, did they really make up for the dearth of Petrified Dragon Bones in the base game. Because nowadays, they're just handing it out like it's candy. Which I am totally okay with. Really, really like it. Just because it was so sparse and now they give you a pretty nice area for getting mass quantities of it. Not only do they have a bunch of it lying around in drops and chests, but there's actually a area later on in the DLC where you can farm it pretty consistently as well. That's also a nice way of introducing you to the sort of rolling door lock mechanic that they're going to be abusing later on in the levels. But, yeah, it's... Oh, <laughs> I knew that was there, and yet I still walked into it, so... What, is that, what does that tell you about From Software? They, they just know exactly how you play their games. And that's what I love, them, love about them. Is no matter what, they're, they're probably two steps ahead of me. And I'm okay with that, because... They do that in order to create a really fun gaming experience. Might as well tag this while I'm here. Try and take as little spikes as possible as I just dash my way on through here. You don't want to deal with any of those ghosts, and I actually have no way of dealing with those ghosts because I'm a full 
physical build at this point. So I have just absolutely no recourse. All that's going to happen here is they're going to hurt me and I'm going to run. And that's all she wrote. There is, there is nothing more to this area than me running, at least until I can hit their corpses. This is me being greedy, but at the same time it's also me making sure that he's not going to be of any difficulty later by dragging him down to this base level. Come on through. And now that all the ghosts are at the base level, I can sort of dawdle a little bit up here. What did I get? Crimson water. That's nice. I can dawdle a bit up here and not really rush because they cannot climb ladders at all. It's something that their AI was not equipped to handle and I am totally okay with that because it allows me a little bit of a brief respite. Could head up there but I am going to want to activate a bonfire somewhere in here and in order for me to do that I'm basically going to have to kill these not necessarily these, but at least some of the ghosts in this level. So, got to make my way through this little crypt here, bashing corpses. Oh, that's one of them corporeal. Save some weapon durability if you're a little bit worried about that, like I am. Oh, they finally caught up to me, but there's only one more, I believe. Let's check. Let's check. Yes, that's that's all the corpses. And kiting around the oh, ow! Kiting around the level like this also gives them a chance to fall into the depths below if their AI is being oh dear. Let's let's get away and heal. I even emptied my stamina, so it took that much more time to get away, but I survived. Okay, I'll take it. Dodge the way out of that. Bash him. Only repair powder. I was hoping for some of his actual equipment because their set can be a little bit of the dickens to farm properly. Oh, dear. I really wanted to immediately step around and get the backstab, but he wasn't having any of that. There I go with my sanctum key for that door that I bypassed a little bit earlier in the level. Perhaps if you notice, but let's see what the backstab does to... Let's see what the backstab does to this guy. If it will give it to me, game. Yeah, 579, so that'll do about 1,000 damage as opposed to the 700 I was dealing with the Bandit Axe. That's pretty worthwhile. Sanctum Knight Helm for that wonderful guaranteed drop. And it's the only bit of their armor set that you get guaranteed, but the rest of it can be acquired just by killing them the regular way. Now that I'm in a little bit of a safe position, I guess you could call it, I can trigger these spikes pro- Ugh. Stupid crossbows. I mean, I understand why it's like that, and I honestly think it's a better place for the crossbows to be that they can fire one-handed, but it's frustrating because that's what I'm trying to use right now to just play the game normally. There we go. Roll out. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, there we don't go. There we go. You always want to be sure to trigger the spikes before you go around gathering the loot because there's no point in taking all that extra equipment damage and health damage trying to get all this because you can just drop that down and have a much easier drop these spikes down and have a much easier time of it. Oh. I'm so glad I brought my agility all the way up to 105. It's such a worthwhile change, and it's so noticeable, too. Even if you're not used to rolling, you can still manage pretty well if you get the proper amounts of adaptability. So let me just check. Do I need to head through here? I don't quite recall what's this way. But let's check. Well, let's check after we activate the bonfire. Order of operations, people. Never never do anything dangerous until you have a checkpoint nearby. I also think that they were a bit better about bonfire placement in the DLC. They're nowhere near as willy-nilly as they are in the... Well, 
that's both the crossbows that I'm gonna the uh, DLC crossbows I'm gonna want. So that's nice. In the base game, they are very silly about how they placed all the uh, bonfires and where they give you rests and shortcuts, but here in the DLC, they spent a lot more time on level design, I think, and I know for a fact that the level design is better. It's just very reminiscent of the Ulusil DLC, if I'm being completely honest. It's very vertical, very... Uh, it has a lot of interesting new mechanics, and there's just a lot to the actual levels themselves with secrets and hidden paths and alternate routes that all really make the level feel a bit more connected. Whereas in most of Dark Souls 2, there's, there isn't as much of that, and it kind of suffers for it. I'm just going to come back here and spend some of my souls because I've been getting so many over there and... Shulva, and I'm also going to want to upgrade my armor some with all the bonus Twinkling Titanite that they've been throwing my way. Let's see, did I actually manage to grab a extra chunk? I did not. So, let's just head on over to the armor and get my chest piece to max rank because that's going to give me the best returns. And, yeah, the helmet gives me the best returns. You always want to be as efficient as possible with your Titanite when you're looking at where exactly you want to allocate it. And so, since the um, chest piece is actually what's going to give you the most extra defenses for each Titanite you put into it, that's what you want to upgrade to max first and then start worrying about the others. So let's come on through. I believe that... I've got three options of where to head at this point. I could head up those stairs... Oh, four options, actually. I could head up those stairs at the end of this walkway. I could head to the beginning of the level and use the key I got from the crypt room. Another option is to... Well, let's kill this first and then talk about my options. Another option is to head on down the path down there where I activated the secret door to the bonfire. Oh, that's not going to work. I was hoping I could just punch him to death, but no. And my final option is to plink away at... Oh! Can you stop? The uh, switch behind the rotational door right over there. Other than that, I believe all the other options are dead ends at this point, so... Not that that's really going to narrow down my options any. I'm just trying to list it for myself as I clear through these enemies and give myself a break to sort through it all. Can I actually equip one of those? No, I, I do need some measure of dark before I can start using the Sanctum crossbows. Let's plink away. Right there. Can I shoot that from right here? Maybe if I come back with... No. Looks like I'm falling down. Oh, there's just a single chest behind there? That's worthwhile, I think, at least. Coming up again. It's a little bit of a frustrating song and dance, but... It's going to be over real soon, and I'm going to have a chest as a payoff, so... I'm happy. There we go. Let's see. What's it going to give me? Any, any enemies? Any enemies? Nope. Good. It's behind door number one. Denial. Yes. Really wonderful miracle here. Especially useful in PvP or against bosses who have the ability to one-shot you because it gives you just a second chance, quite simply. Like, it's extremely useful in the ancient dragon boss fight if you're having difficulties with his whole routine. And I would also imagine that it's incredibly useful versus uh, a certain other end boss that we'll be coming to at the end of this DLC. But enough about that for now. I think I'm going to take the standard path and just head right on through. Not take the 
side routes. I've heard a lot of people praising the invader and uh, pseudo-human AI in this DLC, but I don't agree with that at all. I think that how they upped the ante is incredibly cheap, and it's really the sign that they didn't know how to make the systems in the game more difficult, and so they just kind of allowed the game to cheat a little bit in order to raise the difficulty rather than... Oh, back off that. Matt got caught on the... Did he cast Flash Sweat? I mean, just him wasting time. So, Excuse me! Excuse... <sighs> Infinite poise, everybody. What on earth is that? Yeah, it's... There's nothing clever or smart or interesting about giving the enemy infinite poise. That's just bad design. That's being a jerk to your players because you want to make them rage, because you want to make your game seem more difficult. And, yeah, that fight, as you can clearly see, can be pretty ridiculous depending upon how it plays out. Because he decided to use combustion three times in a row, and because the devs gave him hyper armor when using combustion, I had no chance there. My entire build focuses on dealing high amounts of damage really quickly with high stunlock capacity, and so if they're gonna give an enemy infinite poise, there is nothing I can do really, other than play sort of guerrilla tactics hit and run, never stay up close and personal for long. That should have been a backstab. Avoid all the... Oh! And they let him out of the animation early. If a player casts that, they're going to be sitting there in their little tower of flame for quite some time, but because it's an NPC phantom, the devs thought it would be a good idea to dick you over. I'm not even happy that they gave us Jester Thomas back because all they that, that doesn't it again it feels like pandering they saw that something was popular within the community and so now they just take advantage of it to kind of give you a little bit of a reference in their DLC oh god now he's using warmth I mean it's smart like that is pretty cool how they allowed a phantom to play a little bit smart use interesting tactics like warmth but the rest of that fight is just utter bollocks it is completely cheap completely silly and it really frustrates me that the devs of Dark Souls had to go there in order to make their game more difficult because I, I want to believe that they're better than that but honestly who can say I know that they can make a better game than just increasing someone's poise to ungodly amounts, especially during their attack animations, but in the end, that's that's the game that I'm playing, so obviously they did at least something right. I, I'm, I'm, I'll admit it, I'm a little bit salty about that, just because uh, invaders don't really give me too much of a struggle. And especially Invader Thomas, it's like he has nothing that should be too much of a threat. It's just a matter of he has a bunch of pyromancies. The ideal like strategy when dealing with someone who's spamming spells is to stagger them, close the distance, and just start staggering them while they're trying to cast. And that doesn't work against Jester Thomas because the dead said so. Not because that's not because that's how Dark Souls works, but because the devs thought that they needed to make that encounter really hardcore for all their really hardcore fans out there. And it's it's not about that. It's not about the game just being hard. It's about the game being fair. And that whole encounter there. And another one later on. I'm, it's, it's not just there. But the NPCs, uh, the human NPCs in this DLC are just very, very broken and very frustrating to deal with. One of the biggest issues that I have with the DLC is the fact that they 
completely broke parts of their game just to increase the difficulty for those calling for that. And that's really all you can say about it, is that it, it simply is game-breaking. Taking away the poise mechanic versus certain enemies, especially ones that are supposed to be mimicking humanoid enemies. It's... There, how do you deal with that? How are you supposed to deal with a caster that has hyper armor? That's why Havel monsters are so loathed in PvP, is because having a caster who basically can't be staggered out of their animations and has a ridiculous amount of health is bad for the game because there's very little counterplay opportunities. So many builds are just gonna have a sort of auto loss versus that if they're focusing on really quick staggering hits. The stone ring is basically worthless and while I didn't have it in that fight, I don't need it in that fight. He isn't wearing any poise armor. There's no reason for me to have the stone ring for that encounter because oh that was that was my fault but the stone ring is not something that I really need in that encounter because I'm facing an enemy in cloth armor I should be able to swing my axe and he should not be able to just say oh that's a funny little axe that's in my face have some fire Ugh. yeah I, I am so salty right now and I'm salty because they they really took part of the game and sort of perverted it. They decided to take the game and make it hard for the sake of being hard, as opposed to taking the game and making it hard because it's fair. Like, the final boss in this DLC, that's, that's an encounter that's hard because it's fair. It gives you a boss, this is what it does, it's not gonna react differently. It's gonna. It's gonna be the same boss every time. Its patterns are recognizable. There are things you can do no matter what moves it's using, no matter how it's going to attack you. You can avoid the damage, and you can play the encounter in a smart fashion. The strategies that you have for beating bosses are going to work. It's not just going to rewrite the rule book on you. Whereas. That Jester Thomas fight, and again, another boss fight within this DLC, they do rewrite the rules. They really twist how the game works, and the game suffers because of it. It's plain and simple. It is a worse game for having infinite poise phantoms that can cancel their own animations and whose attacks come off much, much quicker than regular humans. Like, you saw Jester Thomas immediately come out of his firestorm after he triggered it. I had managed to avoid all the hits up until he started moving around and I kind of got caught in the blaze at that point, but that's not how firestorm is supposed to work. It's balanced around the idea that yes, you get all those pillars of flame shooting up, but if for some reason your RNG is just crap, then you're gonna take damage because you just made yourself incredibly vulnerable. You're just sitting there for the enemy to come up and backstab if your RNG doesn't give you any hits versus them. If the fire doesn't come up in a protective wall. And that's the trade-off that Firestorm has. And so handing that to a phantom who is going to cast and forget, just drop that down and walk away as if nothing ever happened, that's completely silly. It's really... <sighs> It is game-breaking. That's the best way I can describe it. And I don't know what they really want us to do with that. But that's just part of the DLC, I guess. Something you got to deal with. Let's see. How many bonfires do I have active? I'm going to... Hmm. I'm looking at the time now and realizing that I've kind of got to wrap things up. I'm not really going to be able to fit in a boss fight. So I'm just wondering where the best place to wrap that up would be. Let's explore one of the routes we didn't take at the Hidden Sanctum, and then I'll shut us down for the night. I'm recording this at night so that I can shut my window and not turn my room into an oven while I record. Because, goodness, the summer heat is just sweltering at this point, and that's not something I want to deal with, even if it is for a good cause. Plink, plink.
coming around. You don't want to sit there waiting for her to disappear because she might turn into a little cloud of poison and just ruin your day. You gonna sit there for me? You are. Good boy. Let's see, did she drop anything? No? Good, I can ignore her. Come on and pop him off. And let's see what's up the stairs. If I remember correctly, this is how you're supposed to get to... Oh, yeah. This is how you get back up after <laughs> falling to your demise, if that's what happened to you. I'm not saying that you necessarily died there, but you probably did your first time. We all did. It's, it's okay. You can admit it. Come right on over here. Activate that one, and this one over here. I have both of those ready for me. Is there anything else down the hallway? I don't think there is. Yeah, no. It's just a blind hallway to kind of confuse you if you refuse to look up. Come on in. Don't forget about this guy. He will try and have his poisonous little way with you, but you know better, don't you? Aggro this guy, and then activate this little trap stone. Just so that he gets hit with the double poke, because if he walks into it, he will only take a single tick of damage, and he probably won't die. So if you wait for him to start coming up the stairs before activating the trap, you can actually kill him outright. If you didn't activate the second switch down the long hallway, you won't be able to open up this chest, which is the real interesting loot, the Puzzling Stone Sword. This whole DLC is designed around giving you a few new spells, some interesting new weapons for both strength and dexterity, but it, it really focused heavily on the dexterity aspect. Which is totally okay, because there's plenty of really fun and interesting strength weapons throughout the game that I don't really think we needed a whole lot more. And the Sanctum Mace is a nice touch, don't get me wrong, but with the Drake Blood Greatsword, the Dex Greatswords finally have a real standout champion, as opposed to the Drawing Lake Sword, which honestly was a quality greatsword, even no, no matter what you want to say about it. In the end you really needed to invest into both strength and dex in order to get the most out of it. Oh. Let's see if I can... Yeah, there we go. I thought that this was just one of those immobile growths, but I was quickly proven wrong. Let's take them out. And the puzzling sword gives dex characters... Oh, let's just take the damage. The puzzling sword gives dex characters a really fun and interesting weapon to mix up PvP with. Combining... Oh dear, I don't want to be near that. Both aspects of... Oh dear. Just get it away. Make it stop. Aspects of the standard sword moveset, as well as a little bit of whip in the... Oh dear. <laughs> they, just, they just don't want to make this easy on me. They, they know that I hate having my weapons break, and they're just going to do everything in their power to make that happen for me. Plink. And one quick jumping attack. There we go. I think that was the best way I could have possibly handled that. And now I can come around the room and pick up everything that was dropping in the melee, and a bunch of the little drops that they give you. Like those dung pies, because who doesn't want dung pies, people? Come on. More poison throwing knives to replace some of the ones that I've been using throughout this level. In fact, I think that gives me a lot more than I've actually used thus far, so that's really good. Next sort of rest stop I get to, I will be calling uh, a little bit of a break because I'm running out of time. And there's Flynn's ring. Is that is that the ring that I think it is? It is indeed. This will give you... It, it sort of functions as a ring of blades, but it's dependent on your uh, vitality stat. The lower your vitality stat, the higher the amount of damage that will give you. And so it really gives you a reason to play a light build even after uh, reaching really high, high levels. Like, 
if if you are breaking the meta level of 150, it still gives you an incentive to keep your vitality low by giving you bonus damage based on how low you kept your vitality. I'm going to make it back to the bonfire, head over to Majula and spend some of these souls that I've just got lying in my pocket, and that will be all for this episode. Probably going to clear through most, if not the all, of the DLC in the next episode, but there is a lot of walking around and secrets hunting in this first little section that I had to take care of here, so it's not necessarily going to be the most action packed in forms of bosses. I know I was able to feed you all a great old soul with each of the episodes prior to this one, discarding the first, but I don't think that trend is really going to be able to hold, at least on this, so thank you all for coming, and I look forward to clearing through the rest of the DLC with all of you watching. You have a good day.